being the dominant power in the Aegean has its advantages. More food than you know what to do with, a treasury overflowing with bronze and gold, and most importantly, all your enemies have been crushed under your formidable sandals. But I can hear you ask, what do I do now? Well, let me tell you. Welcome to the end game. Most people think that 100% control of the map is the ultimate goal, and that is something you can aim for. But let's take a quick look at a few other things you can aim for to successfully close out your campaign. Let's start with the game's namesake, Troy. Unsurprisingly, it has the largest local garrison in the game, which also replenishes very quickly outside of battle. When it comes to laying siege to it, come prepared. We're talking multiple armies with a good variety of troops ready to handle any situation. You will need every tactical advantage you can get. For those true completionists out there, there are three unique siege options you can play, as well as a standard siege of the walls. These are the famous wooden horse allowing some units to start within the city and for the gates to be open, an earthquake which creates breach points in the outer wall, and mighty war machines that you can unlock in the royal decree menu. Whichever siege you try, you'll be fighting through the streets of Troy with multiple choke and fallback points for defenders to utilize. It's worth noting that Odysseus is the only hero that has access to all these siege options. All the other heroes have a selection of three. You also cannot auto-resolve battles against Troy, and you cannot use common or epic agents' actions against it either, so you better get your military strategy straight before going in. At some point you will come across the antagonist system. The game will choose a faction which you have slighted one too many times, or just a faction that sees you as a major strategic threat. For the rest of the game, this faction will grow more aggressive towards you. Whenever an antagonist is announced, a button appears in the interface. This will open a special UI panel where you can check the plans and current situations of the antagonist. Epic mission chains are something to really consider for your faction's primary leader. Each faction leader has a series of epic missions which leads them towards iconic weapons and additional traits. A minor spoiler warning if you want to skip over this one and experience them for yourself. These comprise of a series of dilemmas intertwined with certain battles and campaign missions that will shape key aspects of your later campaign. These missions may take you away from your current campaign focus and cause you to go somewhere completely out of your way or fight battles that you may not want to. But do consider prioritizing these epic missions. The reward at the end of completing the mission chain is more than worth it. If you've done all these things, then you can always start a new game with a different hero. Challenge yourself to play in a different style, more trade, military, diplomacy. At heart, all Total War games are a sandbox experience. You can follow the history or do your own thing. The most important thing to remember is to have fun.